Hi everyone, today we are taking a look at Zombie QLab, a brand new game hitting Steam Early Access on December 7th. A new take on the zombie based survival game where your aim is to cure zombies, not destroy them. Created by Thera Bytes and published by Aerosoft, many thanks to them for the key so I could check out the game before launch. Now as far as early access games go, they are hitting this release at a very completed stage, not without minor bugs and the usual balancing issues of course, but most certainly in a much better state and with a lot more content than a majority of early access titles. Zombie Q Lab turns the usual zombie base builder on its head with the aim of capturing and curing the zombies rather than wiping them out. Indeed, your base is actually a lab and you are tasked with building up this lab and curing as many zombies as possible and gradually working your way up the tech tree. You use ice-based technology to freeze the zombies and then you treat them to become first a range of human-zombie hybrids and then back to humans once you get right to the top of the tech tree. The game certainly has massive theme hospital vibes to me, with some evil genius and oxygen not included thrown in there for good measure, and I am a sucker for this type of stuff. Now before we get on to the main game, I wanted to talk about another project that devs are involved with, and that's Docking Hero. So many of you may remember folding at home from years gone by when you used your spare computing resources to help scientists cure a disease. Well, in a similar vein related to protein docking in this case, Two university teams are looking at what existing medications can help cure rare cancers. The game gives you the option of running a second program using your system resources while playing the game, or if you choose to, while not playing the game as well, to run calculations for the project, earning in-game rewards as you do so in the form of cosmetics. Obviously this is a fantastic project and of course nothing you should feel forced or guilted into, especially with the rising energy costs. And if you're not the energy bill payer, make sure you ask permission before you leave your computer on all day. But you know, this is a way for you to be able to go in and help with this research that's looking at cures for rarer cancers. Now there is one caveat with this, and it left me a little surprised, which was that the software executable downloads with the game. It's not an additional or optional download, and nowhere was I warned that I would be downloading it. So it was a complete surprise to me, I found this out randomly while looking through old news posts of the game, that this docking hero even existed. Now I know some people will feel very strongly about games downloading additional software to their machines without their knowledge. Rest assured I've been told that it definitely doesn't activate without you setting it up through the game. It's also in a completely separate folder within the game directory which I have successfully deleted without any negative effects on the game whatsoever. And now I have reached out to both the developers and the publisher to suggest that they really need to prominently explain you will be downloading this additional executable with the game, you know, and showing it off in a positive light, which is how it should be shown off. And hopefully they'll act on this, as really in my mind, regardless of intent of software, good cause or otherwise, users should be informed what they are downloading, or it should be an additional optional download. We now live in an age where games have been known to download software for Bitcoin mining and Steam even now states what copy protection software games use, so it's a bit of a surprise that this kind of snuck in round the back door. It does not at all detract from the fact the game is really good and this is a really good project, but I just feel people should be aware of what additional stuff is being downloaded with their game. But enough about that, let's talk about the game itself. So currently it's mainly sandbox mode, there aren't any specific missions, but you start out on a map with the basics, a group of humans at the bottom of the tech tree, and then you go up the tech tree. This should be familiar to any fans of these types of management games. Your initial aim is to gather resources, provide the basics for your humans, food, a place to sleep, etc, etc, and quickly you need to start defending the base from nightly zombie hordes. You get the odd night where they're not attacking you, but mostly you're aiming to stop these zombies by freezing them. Once you freeze these zombies, you're able to take them into your lab into the first level of the treatment unit, which will turn them into level one Humbies, the human zombie hybrids. These Humbies can then do basic tasks around your base, hauling, resource gathering, etc. Obviously they can't do what humans can do, but their strengths lie in other things. And you can look at the stats of humans, level one Humbies, level two Humbies and level three Humbies and see that they're all good at different things. Now, as the game progresses, you will need to start sending some of these Humbies back to the main base so that you can work out the next level of cure, which will allow you to create level 2 Humbies from the level 1 ones that have been weightlifting and training up. 
Once you get them, they are the production experts and they get bonuses to production buildings and can obviously do more than the standard level one Humbies. And obviously then level three Humbies can progress beyond that and start doing more of what the humans can do. However, as you get these new members of your team, you have to provide more food, different types of food, things for them to do. Not to mention as you progress and get more Humbies, you'll also have more zombies to deal with as the hordes become stronger. So like many of these games, it becomes a balancing act between the resources, the technology, and the amount of staff you actually have to run your laboratory or base. And what is always wonderful about these games, and it's a thing I love, it's such a simple goal to get to, but there's a lot of planning and management and strategy to reach that end goal. So yes, it may sound like a simple idea, but getting all the balancing right to get to that point is much more difficult. Now, as with any of these games, it's a bit of a time sink as you will start playing and then look at the clock further down the line and it's suddenly many hours later. But it's a lot of fun already. There are a few bugs, buildings seemingly running out of resources and not restocking, the feeding platform the level 1 Humby stopping working a few times, but nothing game breaking. This could be fixed by putting another one down or just moving the one that was already there. The UI and controls took a little bit of getting used to. It took me a while to find out you could upgrade walls without having to click on each piece individually. As there's no drag and select in the game, it's all stuff done via sub buttons that then can be dragged across the walls and things like that you get there eventually the tutorial was great but i didn't really remember it covering some of these more nuanced things but then i might have skipped over it without really thinking about it or realizing the importance currently on the main world map which is quite large there are only a few available options i assume they're going to add more later and these are basically your sandbox modes as it were with different difficulty levels i chose the easy one because i thought well i want an easy start just so i can experiment with the game and see how things build up I was really enjoying my game. I did find at one point that the zombies ramped up a little bit too fast. Suddenly they had winter coats and gloves, etc. So I had much higher health resistance to my icy defenses. And I managed to survive this for a few nights. But then they suddenly ramped up again and started smashing through my newly researched level 3 defensive walls and gates. Which really took me by surprise. And that's part of the challenge, of course, though the ramp up there did seem a little bit sudden and fast. So I think they're still working out the balancing of the game. And of course, the other thing to remember in these games is that bigger is not always better when it comes to the base. As in the game, when you have more Humbies, etc., you have a higher level of attacking zombies coming at you. So I may have simply caused it to ramp up myself by having a larger lab. But so far, my experience with the game has been a very positive one. I've put well over eight hours into the game now since I got it just a couple of days ago. And I do intend to keep playing because I haven't actually managed to yet cure my level 3 Humby and then cure them into a human again. So there's still lots for me to do in this game, even though I've spent eight hours in it already. And that is one of the nice things about this type of game. I always feel like I get my money's worth because I can spend many hours in it and enjoy it. Now I always do a little section on graphics and sound when I do my reviews. Now graphically, the game is very cartoony, which fits the theme perfectly. And as I say, it has very much theme hospital vibes. All of the buildings have their own little animations, as do the various characters. It's worth zooming in and taking a look at these. Even the guards change uniform as their building is upgraded, going from cardboard boxes to pans for helmets, etc, etc. There are even subtle things which I really appreciated, such as walls becoming shorter as they add damage, so it's clear which sections need repair. A stop sign appearing on gates when you select them to be locked so you don't forget you did it, and they even managed to work in a few weather effects into the game as well. Sound-wise, as you might expect, it's pretty fun, silly, and generally non-threatening. There are, of course, alarms which you can trigger to lock down your base at night, and there's a nice change of pace from the gentle background music of the day shift when you get those zombie hordes, everything becomes a bit more tense. Certainly, they're not setting the world ablaze in this section, but that's not what the game's about, and everything fits with it really well. Now the game does have an early access roadmap, and it's reasonably extensive, and on the screen now you can look at it at your leisure, but it's not so crazy as to be unrealistic, though they do include a few wishlist items at the bottom, which I really like when companies split that out. This shows that they have things in mind for the game while still being sensible about it, but it lets you know what they may look to do in the future. Overall, Zombie Q Lab is a really fantastic little game, leaps and bounds beyond what is often released into the early access jungle. You can easily spend many hours in the game and lose track of time, which for me is a sign that I'm enjoying what I'm doing and not becoming bored. 
The tech tree is extensive and you can while away the hours calculating out how many of each building you need to supply the other buildings down the chain. Now the dev team should be very proud of what they have here and I'm excited to see the progress through early access and what else gets added to the game. Does it need a little bit more polishing? Most certainly, it is an early access game after all, but I did not encounter any game breaking bugs so that's good enough for me. I also like the whole docking hero idea, teaming up with universities to give players the option to aid in the fight against cancer while earning some in-game cosmetics. I think that's a really great way to do it. I just hope they warn people of its existence and promote it as the good positive thing it is. Now, if you're a fan of Theme Hospital or things like Evil Genius, you're really going to enjoy this game. It has a very similar vibe. And while it's not as brutal as Oxygen Not Included, it certainly has similar concepts you will enjoy if you enjoy that game. It is an early access game, so I won't give it a score as I never do, but I can highly recommend giving it a go. Once again, thank you very much to the publisher and the developer for the key. Let me know, guys, if you've tried this game and what you thought of it. Thanks very much for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you all soon.